and uh, on today's video I'm going to be opening up this big box which is obviously marked fragile. In this big box should be a DeBoer Hall's North Star USS Reliant uh, large scale resin fiberglass model which I've been looking forward to uh, in terms of getting for a long time. So let's open it up and take a look at what's on the inside. Now I've got the box open and um, have a package in here. Um, here's that there's a set of instructions or something in there, some other stuff. Now I bought this from a third person. I didn't buy this kit from Dennis DeBoer directly. I bought this from an individual who had bought this kit, um, this Reliant, two or three years ago and never put it together. And obviously um, they went out and I think they bought a Voodoo Effects uh, board for the running and strobe lights on here. And I think that's in here too with uh, I think original instructions and stuff. So let me take that and set that over here and move on. Oh, I can see a part already here in all the paper. Here's, here's the bridge dome and the planetary sensor and here are the fan tails for the nacelles where the RCS thrusters go. There's those. Let me see if I can get up on there and you can see that. And those are, that's cool. Let's put that over here. I can see the bridge is much bigger than on the 537 scale by a long shot and much bigger than the 350 scale refit. So, and let's see what else. Here's something else. Ah, here's a nacelle. All packaged up. Still in its original packaging for the warp nacelle. So we'll set that down over here. And a little later I'm going to be comparing those to the, the 350's refits nacelles in terms of length. And this is the warp engine side panels. Set those there. And uh, more stuff in here. Impulse engine crystal and housing. These are cast in a blue resin. Here's the um, housing component right there. Set that down. Move some of this newspaper out of the way. Let's see what else we have down in here. Here is the top torpedo housing and impulse. It says impulse engine, so that's the torpedo housing, and that is the impulse. Sorry, I don't know if you saw that. The, uh, the torpedo housing, the top, very clean casting. That looks really nice. And there's the impulse uh, deck. Set those down. And um, let's move on down through here. Okay, what's this? Well, this is the torpedo tubes for the rear, for the front, and some other parts. The phaser cannon emitters, or whatever those were, the phasers. So, set those down. And then we have, this is marked as the struts. For the obviously for the nacelles, and we have ah, I know what this is right off the bat. This has to be the doors for the uh, shuttle base, the landing base. Yep, there they are, and um, ah, the torpedo wing. This is the what's also referred to as the roll bar on the Reliant. Here's another set of struts for the opposite side. And our other warp nacelle. And oh my lord, that is one incredibly large piece. Now that is huge and that is the top of the saucer for the Reliant. 
You see how big that is? That's beautiful. Very, very nice. Can't wait to get the plastic bubble wrap off of it. Take a look at the cast parts. And Dennis has these reinforced on the underside so that the saucer will not warp. That's really nice. Very well done. Set that over here. Gonna have to get a bigger table for these parts. Because that is huge. I thought using this table would work, but apparently I picked too small of a table because that is definitely one huge part. And um, let's go back and see what else we have. This is getting down here to the underside of the saucer. Yep, there it is. Actually very large, very huge. So that's really big. I'm very impressed with that. I'm really happy about getting this model. I've always wanted this one. And uh, I have a um, the USS Enterprise refit on order from Dennis DeBoer right now. It should be in in a couple weeks or so. And um, really happy to get its matching uh, sister, so to speak, the Reliant, the other Star Trek model that that he produces. So we'll take that out, set it over here, uh, <laughs> on this case on top of the other part, and I'll just check to see if I haven't missed anything. I think that's it. There's not a lot of parts to the Reliant. I think I've covered them. That appears to be it. So let me go ahead and uh, get some of these parts unwrapped and the instructions. Oh, yep, there is another item I missed right here, and that is the nacelle front side drills for it, so missed that one. Set that aside by mistake. And uh, anyway, let me get this cleaned up a little bit and we'll open those up in the instructions and take a look at what we got. Here is the um, package, which I believe has the instructions and items in it. So let's go ahead and pull this out and see what's in here. And obviously, yeah, this is the instructions. And let's see, this is the first time I've actually looked at this. I just opened, cut this package with tape before I started the camera, so I have no idea what's in here. Um, this is marked as Enterprise Instructions General Ideas. I guess it applies for the Reliant 2. Um, filling pinholes, which on a resin uh, model, resin fiberglass, there will be potential pinholes on the casting and that's not a problem just to fill with an auto body putty such as a 3M um, uh, Bondo glazing putty for example so that's not a problem he's got instructions on drilling out the portholes using a 332nd or smaller bit um, for assembly of the saucer and um, install the lighting Install bridge, wiring, removable parts used with magnets. Um, these are the main parts that can be used with magnets. One is bridge area, see diagram A. Also, this drawing above shows the cutout on top of the saucer top for getting underneath, I guess, to deal with wiring um, for lighting. If you need to replace things or whatever in the future, you can hold it. Apparently, you can cut out the hole, and uh, besides to bring your lights up here, but to hold the bridge down with magnets. That's cool. Um, now this is obviously an example of the of the Enterprise refit, but I imagine some of these principles apply for the um, Reliant. Uh, reaction control thrusters, assembly of engine halves, uh, detailing the wiring on the refit, painting, uh, the mythical Aztec patterns for making templates for painting, which I hope uh, to get some of these uh, scaled up. Either I'll make them with my own vinyl cutter and um, cut these, or I'll uh, maybe get these uh, some of these scaled potentially from Orbital Dry Dock, hopefully. 
he's got a masking set for the 350 that he may be able to scale for this uh, if he hasn't already done so for his own build uh, that would probably work out really nice and over here we actually have instructions for the Reliant model one for the Enterprise A and here you'll find a pamphlet one for the Enterprise A the other for the Reliant the reason for this is the Enterprise A has the same construction techniques for the warp engines bridge area etc so when you start assembly of the Reliant first look over, over the Enterprise A instructions uh, he's got photographs showing exactly what to do where full color photos. This is really nice. Cutting out for the um, and removing uh, the pieces for the landing bay, the shuttle bays. Cleaning out the little um, triangular center section pieces for life housing. Uh, here too, creating a port access for magnets uh, to hold down pieces, I guess, uh, to get in for wiring, potentially. Yes, for servicing the lighting system. Um, very nice, direct instructions showing where everything goes, what needs to be cut out on the model for fit, um, proper location of bo bottom hull parts, and use 30 minute epoxy glue to attach the parts, which I have plenty of that, so that's not a problem. And I can't wait to actually look at the parts because, at least in these photos, this is very nicely detailed. And uh, it's got diagrams showing the strut mounting locations for the nacelles and for what's going to lead up to the roll bar. Picture shows struts installed with wiring going into the hull when in proper position glue in place, showing with the wiring components and showing the bolts in terms of holding the struts on. Glue phaser banks onto strut ends. Very straightforward with that. Uh, hole cutouts, um, what to sand where glue everything together with 30 minute epoxy. This is the torpedo deck. Um, cutting out the sections for these parts. Cutting out the interior of the torpedo tube launchers for lighting purposes. And here's roll bar with the torpedo deck and the torpedo tube parts and showing the process of how those go together. what parts needs to be sand, issues dealing with impulse engines, uh, magnets in relation to holding the bridge down in place. That's 14 pages of instructions. Seems to be very straightforward. Obviously I've got some reading to do on that um, to make sure everything's fine. Now we get down to the decal sheet and um, let's see what are these decals made out of? Are these inkjet decals or are these? These are done by JT Graphics, which I am very pleased about because JT Graphics is, in my opinion, uh, other than the decals I make, uh, Jeffrey, I really love Jeffrey's decals. I've never had any problems with his products. They are always absolutely perfect, they work outstandingly well, uh, just absolutely excellent. And, um, I don't think there's anyone out there that makes better decals than, than JT Graphics. Um, and look at these. Look at these registries. These are really large. They're very clear. And this is in the plastic and everything, but they're very clear, very nice. Now I'm probably going to be duplicating these uh, on my own decal paper. Um, just because I want to have an emergency backup set just in case. And I assume that these decals are probably only two to three years old or so. Uh, but there again, I want to make sure that 
uh, I have a fresh set and I'm not going to have any issues with them even though I know JT Graphics makes good decals but after decals age they do can become somewhat problematic these are really nice so that's that which I was hoping to see those so now as you probably noticed there are no Aztecing decals that come with this this is a large scale kit so the issue here is going to be painting um, the Reliant in its Aztec pattern which is uh, a lot less of an issue than the Aztec pattern on Star Trek The Motion Pictures uh, refit Enterprise version which is what I'm going to be doing on the um, the DeBoer Hall refit when I when I get it in and we'll be starting that build later this year along with this Reliant I will be painting Aztecs on both of them the Enterprise will get its Star Trek the motion picture Paul Olson's um, not pearl they're actually iridescent uh, people interchange the term pearlescent pearl and iridescent and the uh, paint really is an iridescent paint uh, for that with an on off option and I will be doing that with the uh, the white base coat and the red green blue and red um, iridescent paints uh, that I've had for a while which work really good and those are the ones I have from Polytranspar so that's the instructions let me see what else is here because I don't know 5% off card like us on Facebook VC Hobbies I didn't know Dennis put stuff like that in there maybe the person I got this from got put that in there but let's see what else do we have here we have oh we have a very odd bit of wiring here and items which appear to be a pre-made kit and sequencer this says this paperwork from James Wesley Roberts, which I think is Voodoo FX. This is from 2009. And I need to cover up who I bought this from, but this appears to be made specifically for the DeBoer Hall refit. Sequencer, intercooler module, three LED deflector module, deflector module for refit. Well, I'm not going to need that. Apparently, there must have not have been something for the Reliant so they bought the refit one but we'll see what's important to me is the sequencer um, for the strobes and nabs so and there appears to be some wiring diagrams here now I need to point out that this does not come with the DeBoer Hall Reliant kit this um, this was added by the person that I purchased this from. They had bought this board with a wiring schematic for it, this wiring kit, and um, showing the actual circuit boards, the leads, the LEDs. Uh, I'm going to have to put a multimeter and other stuff on here to see what type of power this is producing or whatever if it's not all here. Yeah, Voodoo effects, so. Obviously, this is, seems to be a little rough because stuff's just written on these, but we'll see. Normally, yeah, I would. Um, I, I'm not saying I don't have a problem with Voodoo FX products. They are very good. I have some, and I've been very pleased with them. But um, normally, I would have um, probably right off the bat gone to get um, something from Tina Controls from Ralph from Tina Controls. Uh, which is what I was originally envisioning with this kit, but this came with it, so full harness for this and all these, so I'm going to have to see what's what and see whether or not I want to use this. I may, this may be something to save for my refit and do the Reliant differently, but uh, let me package this back up and put it aside and we'll move on to the important stuff right now and that's the actual kit parts. Okay, these are the bridge and planetary sensor. And this one has a mounting rod coming out from behind. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see the detail on the parts. 
uh, crispness of the lines and absolutely amazing stellar castings I'm very very impressed um, looking over this and how smooth it is and free of defects uh, it's just just such minor if you even wanted to even call it issues I mean it's just so clean and free of a lot of bubbles and stuff I the resin models I've used before parts and stuff I've seen and everything over the years usually has lots of pitting and stuff from poor pro, poor quality casting but this DeBoer hull casting Dennis really knows what he's doing and he produces absolutely stellar parts that is really really clean and crisp very beautiful and this is the bridge part and you can see how large that is um, you can see the detail how again how clean and crisp that is very nice very nice part now for comparison's sake because I know someone's going to ask me um, I think this model is somewhere around 1 to 273 scale something like that I may be wrong I'll have to look it up but um, that in the bridge and planetary sensor let me get the bridge and planetary sensor off the 537 scale Reliant and the 1350 scale off of the Enterprise kits. Well then there we go. This is the bridge of the AMT 537 scale um, Reliant and this is the DeBoer Hull size scale. And if you want a comparison for detail get up close and really see the huge differences um, in detail all the way down to the wonderful vents or access panels uh, molded in right here and everything that's obviously missing this is soft this lacks all the ridge detailing on top of this bridge piece and for further reference this is the bridge of the polar lights 1350 um, refit uh, A Enterprise in relation to the um, Reliance Bridge from Dennis DeBoer for North Star Models, DeBoer Hulls. You see the huge differences in scale size. And here again is the planetary sensor from the Reliant from the 537 scale kit this is the planetary sensor from the DeBoer Hull Reliant and obviously dealing with detail issues again in terms of crisp and clean stuff I mean this is just not accurate this is very accurate I need to compare this to the studio model photo references I have but I am sure given Dennis's renown I mean he's known for his quality and accuracy this is just absolutely perfect his um, his models are considered to be, um, to if not the, probably the most accurate reproductions that's ever been made. And um, that's a huge difference in scale. This is the planetary sensor for the Enterprise 1350. So again, you can see the huge differences in size uh, on these parts. And... Um, the detail. I mean here in the polystyrene injected these ridges on the bridge dome which are inaccurate anyway to the 350 Enterprise are very thick and everything and look how fine these are um, on the planetary sensor here for the Reliant. Very well done. Very nice. So that gives you a good idea of scale in relation to the main parts for that. So let's look at um, I guess let's look at the uh, nacelle. Okay, this is the nacelle from the 537 scale Reliant AMT kit that's been re-released by Round 2 Polar Lights, whatever. Round 2 is the company anyway. So that's that size. And let me take just half of that set here. And this is the Enterprise 1350 uh, nacelle. This is straight out of a brand new kit sitting right here which I just took out as scale and then these let me back up to get them in here 
is the the ones from the Reliant. So let's set this aside and this one aside and open this warp engine to sell up and take a close look at it. Okay, I just cut the paper loose. So you're seeing it for the first time along with me. And here they are. Man, that is absolutely huge. Let's uh, set it down here. Put the paper away. And you can see how big this is. Obviously, the camera's having a hard time focusing on it it's so big. But it is definitely huge. And compare that to the 537 scale uh, as an example. And we'll bring in the double half of the 350 uh, Enterprise nacelle. So put that down on top. And you can see how much more there is on the bottom. It's, it's lined up to the top and definitely how much longer it is overall. So that is rather large, and um, which makes it really cool. So next thing to do, let's cut it out of this plastic and take a look at the parts. Now these are the nacelle halves all unwrapped. They were in paper and plastic bags. And you can see just how beautiful these castings are on these and I'll try to get some close-ups for the details so you can see as I move the camera hopefully that's focusing nicely I'll just run right down um, this nacelle mate on the opposite side, one of them. And lift these up. And there again I will just bring back in the 537 as a scale comparison for these very large and I'll bring in the whole two half component of the um, 350 so you can see how much larger this is over the um, 1350 scale these are absolutely huge and these are as I've said previously these are uh, resin fiberglass um, reinforced resin pieces, resin castings, and as you can see here the fiberglass uh, cloth or mesh that was put in to strengthen these up. Um, these are uh, very lightweight and um, very, uh, with the fiberglass reinforcement, they're very uh, sturdy. They're not uh, prone to any major flexing um, and the castings are just absolutely gorgeous. Let me see if I can just hold uh, a couple of these uh, pieces together to give you an idea of what the overall size of the nacelle is and how that looks. Okay, there we go. In terms of the overall size, it is huge. Absolutely huge. This is the um, bottom. of the nacelle. Now, obviously these are not styrene kits, so they're not, um, there are no mounting pins. These, hold, these pieces are going to have to be put together separately, I mean, without mounting um, pins to hold them together, which is not going to be a big issue. I'm not concerned about that in the least bit. It's very, I mean, that's the way resin parts are, um, but you can just see how absolutely huge, how thick these are. Uh, both of them are laid out here. And the seam, uh, once it's seamed together with uh, CA, as an example, um, 
uh, we'll be, I'll be using uh, fillers, um, automotive fillers to come in and uh, float these out and sand these seams down. But uh, I can't hold it together with one hand. Uh, but holding it together with two hands, it really fits exceptionally well. A lot more than what I ever thought it would. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm really, really astonished. And there again, here's uh, the 537 uh, for size comparison. I mean, it's just, just huge, just absolutely huge. And very, very nicely detailed um, on these. So now that we've got these big monster nacelles to um, to look at, let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the big parts, the saucers. Well, I got ahead of myself. I forgot. I wanted to go ahead and show some of the other parts. I'm gonna leave the saucers for the grand finale here for this video. So I decided to open up one of the two struts, and on the Reliant. The struts come with all your wiring in place in advance because the wiring is already cast into the part. So let me go ahead and open this uh, this particular strut, finish opening it up, and we'll take a detailed look. Well, this is it, and this is, as everyone will recognize, um, one of the struts that holds the um, the warp nacelle onto the main hull of the Reliant and this is uh, the part that goes onto the nacelle and this is the part up above that eventually goes uh, onto the piece that holds the um, roll bar on and as you can see all the wiring is in place and um, I think you can actually see it actually cast into the resin a little bit there on the inside of the part this fits up against the hull so you'll never see that That's uh, non-problem and even so that's <laughs> got just enough resin over the top of it to be nice and smooth um, I don't know about the circuitry yet I need to read all the instructions and see exactly how many pairs for what we have you know, obviously there are some floodlights on the nacelles there's the magnetronic magnetomic crystal or whatever it's called uh, I believe you now on the refit those were lit. I'm not for sure if they were on, lit on the reliant. I'm gonna have to go back and check. And then there's you know lighting for the inbound inboard um, uh, grills on here, and I'll have to check. Now, normally those would be lit on the Enterprise. Those are lit when the ship is at warp um, because they're the warp engines. But I don't recall. I don't think. I know a lot about the refit studio model. Uh, I don't know as much about the the um, Reliant, but I don't recall seeing the Reliant ever at warp in um, Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. No, the studio model was he reused, uh, rebranded, and reused for, in the next generation in other uh, Star Trek shows as the Saratoga and possibly other ships, and they were probably lit then. But um, anyway. We'll have to work out the details for that. This will be the Reliant, not the Saratoga. And uh, as you can tell, the castings are very clear, uh, I mean, very clean of any pits, very smooth, just exceptionally well done. I'm very pleased with that. So now that we've seen that, let's move on to look at a whole bunch of the other parts all at once. Okay, these are the Impulse Engine Crystal Housings. And these are cast in blue resin. Now I don't know. I don't actually don't know if I like these being cast in blue. I might, I might have to get a hold of Dennis and see if he can cast these for me in clear, um, and let my lighting provide the blue color. I'm not a big fan of colored uh, clear resin pieces because I, um, I prefer to have them clear and use the lights to light them up the appropriate colors but um, the casting is very well done it's very nice and um, I know on the refit like on the deflector you can um, Dennis will cast that you know those clear parts in whatever color you want actually and um, 
I've ordered mine with them all being cast and clear. But those are very nice. And there's the deflector housing, I mean the impulse crystal housing, where um, this one goes. And it's got all the um, lines on it, um, spokes coming out from the middle on here. And they are all very clean and very clear in detail. So that's this piece. So I think it's this one that goes here. And I think this one goes on the underside of the um, Reliance main hull. But this one will go here. This needs just a little bit of cleanup on the side. Just a little bit of sanding. But still, that'll go there. That'll look very nice. And these are the grills that go on the front of the nacelles. Um, these castings, there's four of them, because there's one on each side of the nacelle, of the two nacelles for the Reliant. These have a little bit of cleanup, but just a little sanding that needs to be done on. This one here has a little bit of resin or something on it, making it just a little rough. That'll require just a little bit of sanding down to clean that up. I'll have to see what that is. Uh, maybe just release agent from the mold. And these up here are the shuttle bay doors. And I'm hoping you can see that they have the panel lines are in the doors themselves, molded on, uh, little recess lines. This one's still covered in release agent. I can feel it. Uh, so these all, all these parts have to be cleaned and prepped before any work on them begins. These two are cast, as you can see, in blue. I may get a hold of Dennis and have these cast in clear. Um, I don't really like them cast in blue. The light that was coming out the side on the side panels of these on the Reliant was a white light from what I recall and this blue resin may cause that, well, obviously cause that to have a blue cast and I don't necessarily like that. There's going to have to be some masking here and everything to get the, the light strips for the light emitting to shine out like this on the studio model. Um, so I have to think about these and Maybe talk to Dennis and see what he'll um, charge to get these parts cast and clear. And then there are these little domes, which uh, I guess these are the ones that go on top of the nacelles. Uh, the little mag crystals um, that go on top of there. And they too are cast in blue. So let's move on to the uh, final bit of parts. Okay, the warp engine grills, or what's labeled here as side panels, come packaged up in uh, paper in a plastic bag or sleeve and then a piece of wood and they're taped onto there to keep them nice and straight and flat and these are the grills uh, let me pull back here so you can see them a little bit better and they are very straight very true um, Obviously they're cast in blue. As you can see the grills on there. The lines are very well done. Um, the parts are excellent castings. You know, when you when you get clear uh, resin, the first thing people want to do is go off and look for bubbles. Which on most casts castings, I mean on clear parts you usually find quite a bit, but Dennis does an outstanding job on taking care of that and removing bubbles and these are just excellent. In fact I'm having a hard time I think I might have found one that's inside right there. It's not even on the surfaces. Of course on this side you can't even hardly see it. And um, if these get painted the way the Enterprises gets painted. The only part of these grills that'll light is the, down inside the bottom of the groove, not these top surfaces. That all gets painted. But you wouldn't even see that bubble, but the bubble is just so tiny. Let's see, is that a bubble? Nope, that's just a speck of dirt. And um, 
very, very well done. I'm just astonished at the quality of these re all these resin castings. I mean, I can't I can't say enough about Dennis's work. This is just an amazing model kit, an amazing resin kit, one of the best I have ever ever seen. And uh, let's move on to these parts. These go on to the main hull of the Reliant. And these actually are part of what hides, I believe, uh, what Dennis says given points where you can cut open the model, add these on top, hold them in place with magnets, hold them down everything to give you access panels to service your lighting system for inside the, the model itself. These castings are very, very clean. Um, very, very neat. Very clean indeed. Uh, let me just get that little flash off of there that had landed on there. Get close to these parts here so you can see them and how beautiful these resin parts are I and mean, they're just exceptional and we'll move over here to these parts these are the phaser cannons or phaser emitters these go up on the mounting points on the roll bar on the ends of the roll bar where the um, warp nacelle pylons or struts and the roll bar comes together in fact one of these is uh, where the phasers uh, came out that shot the Enterprise in the opening battle sequence when the Reliant first attacked the the Enterprise in Star Trek II. This is the sensor pod, I believe, is what it is. I may be incorrect about that. I'm sure I'm sure Reliant purists will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that goes on the front of the um, of the uh, torpedo deck that goes on the on the roll bar. And then these are the actual castings for the um, torpedo um, launchers for the torpedo deck on the roll bar. And let me get real close to these if I can and get this to focus because these pieces are just absolutely beautiful. Exceptional, absolutely exceptional detailed and cast parts. There's not one surface bubble I see on there. I mean, that is just an absolute beautiful casting, and um, the detail is just astonishing. And here's on the um, stern side of that the emitter for the torpedoes, the torpedo launcher for the back side. It too is an absolutely beautiful casting very gorgeous. I am really, really amazed how beautiful these are. So let's um, go ahead and set these aside. I'll move on. There's only two sections of parts left and that's the uh, roll bar or what uh, Dennis has labeled the torpedo wing and the torpedo deck and I believe the impulse deck too. Okay, this is the Reliance roll bar which uh, in the kit is labeled the um, torpedo wing but um, every model that I've ever known has always referred to it as the roll bar. And it comes in two parts. As you can see here, resin, uh, just like the nacelles, obviously re reinforced with fiberglass, which you can see the fiberglass cloth impregnated in, which gives it great strength. Um, and it is a very solid piece, uh, both of them. And um, let's see here. This is, I believe, oh, now I'm challenging my remembrance of stuff on the Reliant. Okay. This is the top piece, and um, this one is the bottom. And I'm just going to go um, over the bottom one here real quick so you can see the detail work on the grills. These little... Um, detail pieces that were on the hull. You have, I don't know if I, my camera is showing it, but you have a scribe line right through here as well. Uh, besides the vent grills. And uh, this is the bottom piece, which um, needs a little bit of cleanup in terms of just cleaning it, but um, this doesn't matter. This right here is where the torpedo deck parts uh, sit, so this is not a defect that's an issue. Uh, this is not a defect at all. 
Um, you get real close in there. So maybe you can see the detail. Now this is the only little bit of soft part, I, uh, soft detailing I see on the grill. But that can be just rescribed out. That's not a problem at all. Um, that's on the underside. So let me go ahead and move this one out of the way and we'll look at the top. And you can see the detail. It's a scribed line up here on this side. And uh, with a little bit of a line running down through here. And this is the grill. It's very clean, very neat. And look at the smooth section and not see uh, any bubbles on here at all. Um, this the whole section right here gets covered over by the torpedo deck, so any issues here, I mean, this is not a problem at all. And then as we move up on this side of the piece, um, you can see how clean and neat that is. There's a little bit of flash on this large piece, but uh, that's nothing that a little bit of sanding can't take care of. And here, I think you can see the um, etched lines. Um, pretty nicely showing up right here on this part. So That's that. Now let's move on to um, this little part. Now this is the impulse deck and um, it too is reinforced fiberglass uh, with fiberglass, the resin. And um, let's take a close look at this and see this part those etched lines are really nice and straight and true, very clean on the starboard side. Um, very nice. Those lines are real clean on the uh, port. A little bit of uh, mold release or something right here is a bump. It's not resin, it's something else. I'll have to clean that off, sand that down just a smidgen. And these nice details. Um, right here. Let me just put that down and see if I can get get the part in shadow so you can see that. Uh, so the edge line's a little soft here on the bottom. I'll have to rescribe scribe that out just a little bit. But um, overall, that's really nice. I'm really impressed with how beautiful that is. And now on to the last piece of the kit, and that's the torpedo deck itself, which I just laid together here a little bit to give you an idea of how large it is. Put that in my hand. It's really big. It too is in two pieces. So you can see what that looks like. For the top part. And we'll just I'll start here. And we'll go down the part. Now there is the only bubble that I've seen so far. Oh, let's see here. There's a little bubble right there. And a little bubble right there. This, I think, is where a strobe light goes. That'll have to be filled in with a little putty. That's no big deal. This, too, filled in and re-sculpted slightly with some putty. But when you look how big this piece is and, and the lack of... of um, bubbles and things on the casting. I mean it is just a beautiful beautiful piece. Now let me bring it around over here so you can see the back section on there. And how nice that is with the detail. Let's get that in some more light. So that's the top, and I believe this is the bottom. It too is very, very free of defects. Just absolutely exquisite in, in terms of the detail. Very, very nice. Here's a little bit of a bubble right there. Maybe another slight one right there, but I mean... Just a slight little one right there. I'm just astonished. That much resin and no, hardly no bubbles. I mean, you could even leave those on there and nobody would probably ever notice. I, as, as a builder, I would know they're there, so I'd probably fill those in. But overall, that's a very nice piece. Now, these, um, 
obviously have to be trimmed out to get the fit on the roll bar and just some more resin that has to be removed along these areas and the um, torpedo deck section, the torpedo deck obviously they go on here and on the rear and you cut through these probably to um, to put the other piece on. I gotta see if these are supposed to be completely removed or the other piece fits onto this. I would imagine it just fits directly onto this but we'll see. And then that sensor pod thing I showed earlier actually mates up to this piece right here on the front of this. So, well, that's these pieces. So this is getting long, so I guess I better get to the saucers because the saucer halves are the last thing left on this DeBoer Hulls Reliant review. Well, there is the bottom hull of the Reliant. And to give you an example of its size again, here is the 537 scale inside the DeBoer hull Reliant. I mean it is pretty small. So just wanted to show you that and as another comparison um, let me show you the bottom hull of the 350 refit Enterprise from Polar Lights. So there it is. This is a comparison because I know people are going to ask me that question. So let's turn it over. As you, oh, well, first off, it's all fiberglass um, reinforced. Uh, you can see here um, for the majority of the hull, there's all fiberglass in the resin. Uh, casting and back here toward this section it's been doubled up even more much thicker and on the side walls to support the structure and this entire um, part these are nicely they'll flex a little bit but they're nicely rigid and uh, let me go ahead and turn this monster over and set it down here so you can get a good view of that and see exactly the size. Um, the level of detail is very nice. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring back the uh, lower hull of the 537 to give you an example on here of the differences um, between the plastic styrene kit and the detail work on the DeBoer hull. And I am 100% positive that the DeBoer hull is going to be a lot more accurate to the studio model. Now there are some parts missing and I showed you earlier those parts that some of those parts go in these areas that which add detail onto this. Uh, there's the piece that goes here obviously. The styrene kit, all that ridge and everything's molded on. These are obviously right there. Uh, the other part that's missing are the pieces that go right here but I showed you those earlier. And you can see these are very crisp and clean and uh, I'm sure one of the questions that people are going to ask are the windows there and uh, because if you look on the styrene kit um, obviously that that's as smooth as it can possibly be and I don't think we need to look at that styrene kit anymore so let me just set that aside but you come down here and lift it up in the light and you can see the sensor bands are on here and all the window ports are on these pieces so you can be able to drill these right out they're nicely molded on so you can identify them um, and let's start back here at the back and we'll just work ourselves around a little bit I have to admit this thing is so large it's hard to deal with get enough light so you can see everything Obviously the shuttle bay, um, these have to be cut out for the shuttle bay doors. And the impulse deck goes on here. And we're looking at this obviously upside down. And I'll bring it around here so you can see the other windows. This is the strut, one of the strut mounting locations for the pylon struts. These, these all bolts on. And you can see the other windows here. And I'll just casually kind of 
Um, this is the port hatch um, for the um, docking port when she's in space dock. And as you can see, all the windows are molded on. Um, there's some right here. And the RCS thrusters are molded on with their triangle. A little soft on this casting right here. This will have to be re-etched slightly. But this is from the old mold. Uh, the old molds, I need to point out that Dennis has made new molds. And he's now recasting this model. So I'm sure that where this is just a little faint, and I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. I can see the line. I can slightly rescribe that. That's not a, not a problem. Um, but it's actually there. It's just real faint. Um, I'm sure the new molds are, are much better than that. Now we'll come up here, and you can see uh, the phaser emitters. And again, portholes all molded on in place so you know exactly where those need to be drilled out, including uh, hatch covers, um, which I assume that's right here. And we'll swing around over here on the opposite side so you can see. Now, this is incredibly smooth. Uh, here's a um, hatch cover right here. It also needs to be slightly scribed on the inside. The line is there, but it's just slightly faint. But that's not a problem at all. Um, this is uh, an exquisite kit. Exquisite casting. This is unbelievably smooth. And uh, here's where the planetary sensor goes. And we'll come back here and take a look at some of the um, details toward the rear. See exactly how that looks in some of the um, grill work. Very well done. Exceptionally cast. Here's another one of the um, hatches. And some more of the um, phaser emitters. And we'll follow this grid line and come out here. This is where one of the nav lights goes on the model. This is um, it's upside down so this is the port side and up here at the front you have for the nav light here and over here on the starboard side um, the nav light is in place location right there. Everything is identified quite nicely for that. I'm going to have to go back and look at the um, all of the um, studio photo references, I mean the studio model fo photo references that I have but as you can see the sensor grids are molded on and some more of the windows uh, some need to do a little clean up here but overall uh, that is looking really nice and here's another location for the RCS thruster so let's go ahead and move on to the top of the saucer well she's unwrapped and now you can really see those support struts which is aluminum tubing um, put in place, bent at the appropriate angle, and glued in to hold these uh, to hold the saucer in its shape. So you can see the whole saucer reinforced with um, fiberglass. So let's flip it over and take a look at the most important parts. And there it is. A lot of wonderful detail. And again, back for some comparison issues, here is the AMT 537 scale, as I've said previously. And this is so big I need to get up out of my chair so you can see this, how absolutely large that is. And uh, obviously there are some major detail differences between this and the DeBoer hull which I'm sure is much more accurate. But let's take some more close-up looks. Let's bring it around here and start up here with the BC deck, which would be underneath the bridge. And we'll get in close here and see these hatches. 
and the window ports all molded in nice and clean and clear and we go around to the port side of the vessel so you can see that and we'll pull back and take a look at the detail pieces on the sensor grid right here phaser emitters and let's go check out to see about those windows that I know everyone will be asking for and there they are molded in place so that you can drill them out Now there are a few little minor imperfections on this top of the saucer. There's a piece of rogue resin right there that'll have to be sanded down. But uh, overall this is incredibly smooth. And you can see the different hatch hatches with it etched in. And right here there's a couple scrape marks on the hull, so that'll have to be sanded and slightly filled. That's no big deal. And let's get up here on these and take a close look at these and the details. Again, this on the port side, you can see all the windows are located on the model so they can be drilled out which on the 537 scale on the new re-release there are no windows there so this is all smooth including these lines I believe but uh, Paragraphics produces a um, photo etch set to allow you to drill these out on the uh, 537 scale which I will be building I believe before I begin the build on this model Now here's one major problem. Um, on top of this sensor dome, this one has quite a large um, resin bubble that'll have to be filled and sanded, re-sculpted around. I mean that's not undoable, that's an easy fix, but that's the only major flaw I see on, on top of this hull that'll take a little bit more time take care of and that is not a beef of an issue at all in something this large and, and detailed. So I'm just going to fly around here so you can see some of the detail work. Um, it's one of the things when I was researching the DeBoer Hall refit that I really wanted to get a lot of um, um, detail out there in terms of the build, the quality of the model and all that sort of thing and I just did not run into anything that was really available. Um, very little information in terms of people who have built it so I wanted to make sure I fully document this build and give my subscribers something to see in terms of all the detail on the model and to give you an idea if this may be something you want to invest in. and. Unlike a styrene kit, this is obviously an investment. Um, I think Dennis, uh, right now, the Reliant, with all these extra parts, it has a lot more parts than the refit does, is um, going for somewhere around $1,800 plus shipping. Which, if you want a large format Reliant, this is it, and the quality of Dennis's work is absolutely amazing. I mean, this is just outstanding. You will not find a better um, Reliant model large scale uh, if there was anyone, and as far as I know, there's no one else producing one, but you, I don't think you would find anyone that could produce a better quality product than this. This is truly amazing, and it is act actually just beautiful. The quality of the work is just gorgeous, and this and the refit uh, from Dennis DeBoer, that I have on order is obviously are two dream projects for me for my own personal builds um, for my own collection permanent collection 
uh, for these. So I'm very happy with these. I mean, this is obviously gorgeous. And I will be doing these later in the year, uh, starting on them, if all goes as planned. Uh, but again, to show you the size comparison differences uh, between the two. This is the only styrene kit that's available out there, for, as I know, in uh, this size. There are other resin kits and things that are available that are smaller than this for the Reliant. And of course, this is the De Dennis uh, DeBoer, the DeBoer Hall North Star Reliant, which is absolutely a fabulous resin kit. I'm just completely astonished how beautiful this is. Um, let me put these two hulls together on top of each other so you can get an idea of what that will look like. Okay, now this is not easy to do given the size of this and I'm holding this on my arm, my hand here, but it will give you a little bit of an understanding of the size of how thick the hull is. I mean it does look very appropriate to the studio model unlike the AMT kit of the past. This is incredibly large and obviously unlike some people who have built the AMT kit and had problems with fit and issues of getting things to fit there's a ton of room in this one to get all of your stuff you want to fit in there. Now I won't be putting the electronic boards for these inside the kit I don't believe so unless of course maybe through the special hatches that are planned on you know Dennis has designed into them in relation to the um, using magnets to get in but more than likely it will be an external base for this or whatever my connection space will be so this is it and I just wanted everyone to take a little quick look at how thick that is and it's going to be a beautiful build I'm very impressed and very pleased so there it is and thank you for watching everyone this is uh, one of my future builds along with the DeBoer Hall Enterprise refit as well. And um, thank you for watching, and I really appreciate it. And take care, everyone, and happy modeling. Thank you.